Hello, my name is Sonia Vitalik. Our number is C019. Today I have chosen a paper to present. Its name is Emoji Prediction from a Sentence. These three are the authors of the paper. And let me first give you an overview of this paper. So let me begin by explaining you what the paper is about. So paper is actually about trying to predict from NPL, natural language processing, that whenever a user types a message, a sentence, at the end of every sentence, one emoji should be evoked, which gives the sentiment of what the sentence is about. For this, Twitter's database is used, the tweets are used and uh, the authors have tried their best to find the model which works best for uh, uh, understanding the sentiments. Various classifiers are also built associated to these sentences and at the end the authors are also somewhat successful in doing what they want. Now why did I choose this paper? So, emojis are used in day-to-day -day life by almost everyone. Uh, not only in this paper, even though just Twitter is taken, but not only on Twitter, but on other social media websites such as Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat and others use uh, emojis, emoticons. Uh, it has become one uh, way of communicating and it is... Uh, a unicode so there are no language barriers so it is best way to understand to predict and to make users uh, uh, better for the users now so many uh, companies are uh, trying to understand their best and trying to give their best to in this research work so yeah and it is so now let me start with the introduction of what paper is about. As I mentioned, emojis have become a new language itself that are more effective to express uh, or the emotion is expressed very well using the emo emotions. So this uh, prediction has already been uh, implemented in uh, Apple's keyword in their iOS 13 version but not for all uh, the sentences and everything it is just for a few words which evoke a certain type of emotions so emoji prediction is fun variant of sentiment analysis when texting your friends emojis can make your text messages more expressive not just friends like friends and family it would be nice if the keyboard can predict the emoji based on the emotions and the meaning of the whole sentence you typed. Moreover, despite its status as language form, emojis have become far scarcely studied from an NPL standpoint. The interplay between the text-based messages and the emojis remains still virtually unexplored. In this particular paper or project, the aim is to fill the gap by investigating the relationship between words and emojis and studying various problems of predicting which emoji is evoked by the text message, finding out which um, model is best uh, for doing so, building classifiers that learns to associate emoji with the sentence. Moving forward, related work. Emojis first. Emojis, as you know, is an uh, uh, also known as ipigram or spindle, can be used as a compact expression of object, topics, and emotions. Being encoded in Unicode, they have no language barriers as diffused in the internet rapidly. The preference of the emoji has attracted researchers from various research communities such as NPL, data mining, multimedia also. The various non-verbal functions of emojis play a very important role in adapting to the extent that they can their unique linguistic purpose alongside the written text. Coming forward to sentimental analysis, 
Sentimental analysis refers to the use of NPL techniques to study the subjective information or from a sentence. Currently, sentimental analysis is a topic of great interest uh, development since it is widely used in getting insights of social media comments, survey responses, product reviews, making data-driven decisions, uh, and also in stock markets. Some applications such as recommender system employ binary classification to determine if to express like or dislike of some product or even uh, polarity of the statement. Other forms of sentimental analysis is a uh, unique category, labels similar to the emoji tags to predict and those distinct emotions such as happy, confused, tired, surprised, uh, angry, etc. Since emojis have multi-contextual con contextual representation and is readily used across all languages, it serves as a great sentimental label that can encapsulate these sentences. So this was the related work to the paper which is already done. Coming forward to this paper again, uh, the data sets and the features used. So your tweet, tweet emoji is the data set which is used. So given the preference of emoji usage on digital uh, opinions on Twitter, it is obvious to extract the richest data set from the Twitter. So Twitterology dataset provides an extensive set of almost 13 million tweet IDs, uh, tweet IDs and uh, emoji IDs and the sentence. We fetched this, uh, the V in the sense the authors fetched the three uh, from the Twitter's API with provided ID to aggregate our data set to sentence emoji ID pairs. The data collection process is, uh, is shown in this figure. See, so tweet ID and emoji IDs were there and through Twitter API we also got the string or the tweet which was tweeted by this ID. Okay, so once we collected all this data, obviously pre-processing was very important. Okay, so because 50, more than 50% of data was of no use. So first applied pre-processing method was noise removal. So this method filtered out which uh, the emojis which has less than 1000 corresponding tweets. Second was top emojis. Like the stop words technique in NPL, removal high frequent emojis which were everywhere and do not have any specific meaning, do not have any specific sentimental meaning. And third one was data unbiased, equalize the number of sentences on each emoji. So these three data pre-processing techniques were used. So this was the emoji category after data pre-processing so there were uh, it was categorized in people symbol and others the title was given uh, and the short forms were also given after pre-processing so for further there were four different methods which were used and which were explained in the paper how and why were used. So let me begin with BOWTIFIDF. Uh, so instead of representing the sentence with matrix of corpus and counts like we have seen in class, we can also employ a bag of words representing the TDIDF trying to capture more indicative keywords in a sentence. The, uh, the dictionary size is 1834 after stop words and steaming. Uh, and other feedbacks was taken from a uh, name base and SVKM. Uh, so this was BOWTF IDF where the bag of words was represented. Second was GLOVE GLOW. Uh, for deep learning and SVKM methods, uh, uh, GLOW was used. It was a pre-trained uh, and uh, if adding global statistic to our Twitter corps would help the neural performance, GLOW was an unsupervised trained model. Next was the name-based classifier. 
the whole pipeline of the nave base so this is the uh, visual representation of nave base classifier the whole pipeline of the nave base classifier is shown here from the twitter uh, we can collect data which contains tweets messages and its corresponding emojis as labeled then by using word dictionary we transform the text into words and word vectors uh, into bag of words with td idf to describe the above finally nave base classifier to train the model for text classification so this is how uh, multi still name based classifier was used last method was bil stm classifier for rnn model the first layer so this is the visual representation of this for rnn model the first layer is embedding layer will represent each word as a matrix the embedding layer is loaded into a pre trained glove model and weight is fixed during the training the glow will uh, map similar word to close vector in high dimensionality features the next layer was 1d convectional layers and so on so it allows previous outputs to be used as the inputs while having hidden states so it is suitable for analyzing the sentences okay so this were the four methods used coming to the experiments this four methods were applied to our data set and the results were so there was an overall accuracy but if you see nave base classifiers and svkm classifier uh, the model chose a uh, nave plus classifier because it was uh, it can take words frequency of 2791 which is created from just the training set okay the overall navis classifier cla uh, classification accuracy was 19.53% while for svkm did not work quite good it was very poor it showed 9.1% on the back of words bedding and much better uh, than glow embedding so this too shows it so what happened was there were many uh, Uh, many categories so the categories were reduced hence the accuracy increased next was bi lstm classifier uh, it also is uh, shown it also worked out but it didn't work out as good as the nebis classifier did so let us conclude this paper uh of this conclusion is uh, what the three authors came after doing all this work the experiment outlined above uh, uh for which nave base performed the best among all the methods analyzed the problem set and the lectures of nb is uh, nave base is very good for text classification such as spam classification so the authors had very high confidence of uh, on nave base to work from for this prediction as well and uh, it did it, it did work good compared to the rest but for deep learning approaches uh, other approaches could have been taken such as bolt or excel net to see if the uh, they could overcome the weak semantics more importantly many related topics of this work employ data uh, but uh, the data set was small it was around 220 200000 in total therefore this data cannot be generalized enough for deep learning to overcome the traditional methods uh, uh one thing which was clearly discovered after the experiments that Uh, removing the stopomology is essential to handle the uneven distribution because when one emoji dominates the data set it will become it will it will make the classifier to prefer that emoji for all the sentences due to the nature of this problem the emoji and the sentence only have weak semantic relation wherein examples which share <coughs> the same emoji actually expresses total opposite emotions so therefore often one is to one mapping of emoji and sentence on an expression is hard <coughs> uh, if we have a user 
decide which emoji to use a bit in addition we uh, the accuracy was not that high but it could certainly work on uh, currently the accuracy is just based on the absolute correctness which uh, a very hard ask very hard ask of model given the weak semantics nature of the problem so this is what the paper was about so i'll uh, end this paper by telling what i learned from this is that this paper uh, even though it couldn't give very amazing outstanding results it, its accuracy was just 19.53 but it would have helped uh, the researchers who are working in this field to they uh, Uh, yes uh, as the authors also mentioned there are other techniques which were unexplored but it can be explored by the others so uh, but for me uh, this paper uh, very well um, made, made me aware of which techniques are used uh, for such uh, sentimental analysis problems uh, it made me understand various things so i hope that i have done a uh, 100% uh, of what the paper has explained through this ppt yes that's all from my side thank you